plaintiff, Cassidy Stevenson, says she was a drug addict for years. And not only did she overdose on heroin, but she was also arrested 16 times as a result of her drug use. Cassidy's suing her sister today for the balance due in a car and insurance deductible and car rental fees. Defendant Ronnie Jo Stevenson says she too was a drug addict and she believes a lot of her issues come from her childhood trauma and abandonment issues. Ronnie Jo insists she's been clean for nearly two years. All rise. This court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Greg Mathis presiding. You may now be seated. All right, start with you. Um, well, this is my younger sister. Um, to just give you some background. Uh, in 2010, uh, we lost our father to Lou Gehrig's disease. That's when my father was a police officer. My father was a dare officer. Um, that's kind of when things took off and, and, and life changed for us. I was a flight attendant at the time. Um, my sister was already dabbling a little bit, but that was the first time I'd ever did a hard drug. Dabbling with what? Drugs, opiates to be specific. Um, that was the first time I'd ever did a hardcore drug was the day that we buried my father. Um, my life kind of, I'm so sorry. Why uh, one time? What's that? That was the only, if you only did it one time, what, how did, how did that lead to addiction? That was the first time I'd ever did, uh -huh. the, you know, the hardcore. It mm -hmm. took off after that. That was all. That was That's all what I'm asking you. How? But, people want to know. I just, yeah. I'm saying this for other people. Did you start every day because the first day was such a good high? Yes. Or the first day allowed you to escape the pain of your father's death? And then the next day you wanted to stay escaped? You wanted to still address the trauma with drugs? Yes. And, and day to day to day. So, okay, and that led to how long of an addiction? So that happened in March of 2010. Uh, by December of 2010, I had left my job as a flight attendant. I was bankrupt. Um, I'd also left my other job of 13 years, and then I became homeless. I struggled for five years. Um, before I got, before September 2nd, 2015 was when I got sober. I'd been arrested 16 times been to detox six times and rehab three times. Um, when is the last time? It, I, my life changed September 2nd, 2015. You haven't relapsed in uh, seven years? Four years then I had a lapse of judgment. We were living in Myrtle Beach um, for about two months. I had a lapse. Okay, so you relapsed for two months in what year? Three years ago, a little over three years ago. And I'm grateful for that relapse. It changed my perspective because the minute that I thought it wouldn't happen to me, it did. The minute that I thought that I was better than, it, it happened to me. Did you go to NA class? Yes, AA was my foundation. Um, and you went regularly up until the time of the relapse? You were still going? Yes. How often? I was very active in AA. Um, I was active in AA. I was leading up to that. I had... Um, well, leading up to 2010, or I'm sorry, I don't. 15. I, I leading up think. to 15. I'm sorry. When I literally can't change. think straight right now. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so August 15th, 2015, I had overdosed. Um, I was dead for 19 minutes. There happened to be a nurse in the parking lot who saved my life. There was a police officer there who had told her three different times to let me go. She refused. I met that nurse when I was six months sober. And she's still a part of my life today. Good. What do you think caused your relapse? Um, the minute I wasn't working on my recovery, I was working on my relapse. I stopped doing the things that I did to get sober. Were you still going I to was, classes? No. All right, I wasn't doing AA. I hear, wasn't. Because we need to educate people. Yes. Uh, we're glad that you came through it, et cetera, et cetera. But I'm more interested in the public knowing yeah. that the relapse is because you stopped going to NA. Yeah. So August 15th, 2015, I had overdosed. Um, I was dead for 19 minutes. There happened to be a nurse in the parking lot who saved my life. 
There was a police officer there who had told her three different times to let me go. She refused. I met that nurse when I was six months sober, and she's still a part of my life today. Good. Defendant Ronnie Jo Stevenson is being sued by her sister, who claims Ronnie Jo stole from her to support her drug addiction. All right, let's hear from you. Um, <clears throat> I have a little different perspective on our childhood. Um, it was in, it was great until it wasn't. There was a lot of lies, deceit, um, trauma, trauma, childhood trauma, and uh, like I, what? Just watching the, the things that happened to our parents. I don't know what that means. Go ahead, I move know. right along. My mom was cheating on my dad for a very long time. Cheating? Yes, mm -hmm. and that affected us immensely. How did you come to know about it? She didn't, she didn't hide it from us. Okay. I mean, my little sister was two years old and she'd have him babysit. At one point she had us lie, uh, she had asked me to lie about where we were at certain times. Oh, she say, lie so I can be with this man. Yes. Okay. That's, I'm yes. trying to understand um, what you're saying. So we are talking a little slow and a little low. I know, so I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I do interpret. that. <clears throat> um, speeding up, um, I managed to graduate high school. I was one out of four that gra was able to graduate. I was doing very well for myself. Um, I started getting high because I liked it. Um, oh. I would say, well, I started drinking. D 21, I was drinking. Hard drugs, when did you start hard drugs? Probably 1920. Okay. I didn't realize it at the time, but through years of therapy, I dealt with a lot of um, abandonment issues emotionally and physically from my Let's mother. Let's go back to you starting, however. She says she started after your dad died. That's not trauma. true. Pardon me? She was using before my dad. Hard, hard drugs? Y yeah. Okay, cocaine, opiates. heroin, or pills? Just, op just pills, opiates. Okay, all right. And you you all had both been doing it already. Yeah, I was She said it was, I was triggered by her, my, your dad's death. I was already in my addiction. That's you. She said she wasn't. She was using. Okay. And you were already using as well. Yes. Because you it began just because you wanted to get high. Yeah. I, had I like somebody like you that comes in here and tells the truth like that. Because uh, most come in, 95%, uh, well, I started because my back ached. Yeah, no. Well, I started because my big toe, I, I stumbled into the wall. <laughs> so that's why I started. Go ahead. I'm yeah, sorry. I had a cocaine-induced <laughs> heart attack when I was 20 years old. I had another heart attack a year and a half later, which wasn't drug-related. So I had this heart problem. Me, as an addict, I'm like, okay, I'll just stick with the downers. Got um, started taking Xanax, and then it led to the opiates, and then it just progressed from there. Now, so many people take Xanax, and I, you don't hear that story. Like people who have anxiety, who legitimately yeah. take it for anxiety to keep them level. Now, do people who do that, they end up going further because of how the Xanax relaxes them? Mm -hmm. Possibly. I mean, at one well, point I was You've been in that prescribed. circle. Don't act like you don't know. You well, know everything about I, it. You've been in the circle with dope fiends for 20 years, you say. Yes. I was prescribed um, clodopin at one point. I went through a super bad depression when I was, like, 19. Um, but at that point, it didn't. It, I wasn't abusing them. So I, I've dealt with depression since I was 19 years old. Okay. Um, See, all of this, what you're saying, is self-medicating. So even though you started, you say, to get just uh, because you enjoyed it, it turned into, as you were saying, afterwards, it yeah. turned into self-medicating with all the yeah. problems. I mean, it, physically, I had to have it or I'd of be course, sick. Of course, that's what addiction is. So how long were you uh, on drugs and how far did you go? Only the pills? Only opioids? No, I, um, so our father died in 2010. I moved, in 2011, I was homeless. I called my mom, I said, Mom, I'm gonna die, I need help. She got me a plane ticket the next day. I went to Myrtle Beach, where she was living. Um, I went to a rehab, didn't take it serious. I met a boy who took the focus off. 
we got engaged, started shooting dope. We got high together. Um, shooting what time of dope? Heroin. Um, I got pregnant, had my son, and- You affected by your heroin use? I, I ended up, I had to get on methadone while I was pregnant. Did he end up getting your child? Was your child affected by it when yes, on birth? Yes, he- um, And throughout their life? Absolutely. I um, underdeveloped mentally. Oh no no no! What? How he's was great. Child affected. My child's amazing. He he turned out amazing. And scholastically, he's amazing. Yeah. Okay. Everything's. How old? He's perfect. How old? He's is nine he years child? old. Nine. nine. Yeah. Okay. All right. And the scholastic is like what? What are his grades as a nine-year-old? He gets good grades. Does he get all A's and B's? Mm-hmm. Okay. Go ahead. Um, when he was two. How long have you been clean? Uh, June 18th, 2020. Okay. I will have two years. No re no relapse? Um, we had a fire. Well, I went to rehab in 2020. I went and stayed in a um, detox, or not a detox, I'm When's sorry. When's the last time you used drugs, ma'am? June, oh, uh, well, I don't know. Okay, because you come across it. like you're currently using. No. Okay, you do. And uh, if you don't want, you can't get help. I can't give you help if you don't even admit that you're using, but I think you are. I think she's okay. clean and I think you're still addicted. She was using before my dad. Hard, hard drugs? Yeah. Okay, cocaine, Opiates. heroin, or pills? Just, op just pills, opiates. Okay, all right. And you, you all have both been doing it already. Yeah, I was. You said it was, I was triggered deep by her, my, your dad's death. I was already in my addiction. That's you. She said she was. She was using. Defendant Ronnie Joe Stevenson is being sued by her sister, who claims Ronnie Joe stole from her to support her drug addiction. All right, let's move on to the uh, car. Go ahead. <clears throat> um, back to the car. Um, so. October 12th, uh, right before this, I was basically living like a prisoner in my own home. To, as she was starting to tell you, February 21st, we did go through a house fire, and it was the most traumatic thing that we've been through. Uh, losing everything sober was a completely different kind of pain. But for her, that was too much for her, and then she just kind of fell off after that. So in October, um, I was basically living like a prisoner in my own home. She was stealing from me. I had to get a lock for my bedroom door. She was living with me. She's 35. She always has. She's been in and out of my home, always. This started back, I mean, it's always, it's always been that way, but it, in 2017, when I went down to Myrtle Beach, she came home with me. She got clean then. She lived with me. She was, had a job, was doing great. And then the, the fire, 20 happened, the fire happened, all of that. So in October, um, she, I was sleeping. I'm a bartender. She had taken my car without my permission. You all right? Don't nod out over there on me. Sit up straight, please. Sir, Sit I'm up not... straight in court, ma'am. Sit up straight in court, ma'am. I'm very short. Put your arms I'm off, standing. like that. Okay. Stand up straight, there you go. Or like your sister, not like that, all right? And like that, all right? Because that's how you were. Okay. Looking like a dope fiend. That's okay. how you were. Thank all you. All right, go ahead. So um, she woke me up and told me that I had a flat tire. I already knew something was more wrong than just a flat tire. I didn't even get the truth from her. I, don't, I still don't know that I've gotten the truth from Correct. her. Correct, you have. Um, I still don't know that you I'll haven't. ever get the truth from her. I can but tell you it's, that, go ahead. It's my understanding that she scrounged up change to go buy a lottery ticket that morning. Um, apparently she had put my car in a ditch. Now this car was a, a Cadillac CTS and it was my favorite it was actually my dream car when i got sober i was able to walk into a dealership on my three-year anniversary and walk out with that car it wasn't in perfect condition when she took it but it was drivable and i was paying for it and that day she took that from me so she i go outside there is a hole so big in this tire and she's trying to put air in it I could put my thumb in the hole that, like, that's, that's in this tire. Um, basically, I kicked her out after that. Um, what else was I supposed to do? And to this, so basically, I'm suing her for what was not paid. I had to pay for a car that I don't have. You say when you ask for her to pay. 
What's that? What has she said when you ask her to pay? We didn't speak for four or five months after that. Um, I didn't start talking to my sister again until March. Uh, this when my, past March? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, when I kicked her out, um, that wasn't easy for me. Has she ever said she would repay you? She's tried, she said that she would pay me and she said that she would make arrangements, but I'm never gonna be a priority. She told you that? I just know that. Like, okay. That's why All right. I'm here. The reason I'm getting to that, because one of the main tenets of uh, rehabilitation, I don't have to tell you, of the 12-step program, is repairing the damage you've done to people. Honesty, repairing the damage that you've done. So we'll see whether she's uh, rehabilitated as she claims one year later. Go ahead. She said, you say 2021. She says 2020. Go ahead, ma'am. You tell me about what happened. That morning, mm -hmm. um, it was eight in the morning. I was mad because uh, her daughter had the TV up really loud. It woke me up. So instead of walking, I took the car and I didn't even get uh, 50 feet away from the driveway. We There's ditches all down the road. Um, I didn't go into the ditch because there would have been way more damage. I literally hit the rocks. There would have been way more damage. Like I, I would have been worse stuck than being in, totaled. I wow! Thank stuck. you. Thank you. I would have been stuck Go in the ahead. ditch. Go if ahead, man. Who cares ditch. about you? Go ahead. Okay, so. Um, but you'd have been stuck in the ditch. If you, whatever happens when you're shooting hair on, <laughs> you gotta live with it. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, I don't do heroin, and I never will. Man, okay. move on. Um, you told me you did heroin, and you were talking about when you relapse right now. And I kicked her out. Um, that wasn't easy for me. Has she ever said she would repay you? She's tried. She said that she would pay me, and she said that she would make arrangements, but I'm never going to be a priority. She told you that? I just know that. Okay. Defendant Ronnie Jo Stevenson is being sued by her sister, who claims Ronnie Jo stole from her to support her drug addiction. Go ahead, ma'am. Yeah, uh, the, the fire was super traumatic, and I dealt okay, with it Okay, the fire the made way. you do it. Got it. What so else? So I, we weren't in a good what space. What made you do it this time, ma'am? We weren't in a good space, so. How about now, ma'am? There is no, nothing. Okay, I don't okay. believe you. Uh, do you I, agree you owe her? I got you. Do you agree you owe her? Yes, I, um, I definitely owe her for her um, deductible. I um, don't think I'm... She didn't have gap insurance. I don't know how that's my fault. Um, I don't know. No, it's your fault. Everything after you took the car is your fault. She, Every single thing. She's literally, she hates me for it. Mm -hmm. I was told that the only way to hurt her mm -hmm. is through her pockets. And that's what happened. Ma'am, can I move on from you? You sound like you don't fiend right now. Can I leave? No, I'm you over the You determined that was the way, see? That's what dope fiends do, exactly no, what you're doing. This is Judgment for the plaintiff, ma'am. $4,415. When you want help, come back. Other than that, I believe you are a dope fiend right now. Have a good day. about my sister. I don't want anything to happen to her. And anything that I've ever done is out of love for her. Um, she is doing better. She does have a car. For the first time in 12 years, she has a car, and that worries me. I worry for her safety, and I worry for, for the safety of innocent people. Because I don't know. And every, again, She's still my sister at the end of the day, and she might be trash for what she did, but she's still my sister.